My name is Asel Sadbaeva, and today I will tell you about vaccines uh, without refrigeration. So, um, vaccines uh, are one of the most effective and successful interventions in healthcare. It is estimated that vaccines prevent more than 3 million deaths every year and another 2 million infants death, infant deaths, so these are children under 5, could be prevented if we could vaccinate those children in time. Uh, unfortunately, today we can't deliver these vaccines to those children in time. And one of the biggest problems why we can't deliver them is our dependence on vaccine called chain. So vaccine called chain is when, when we produce vaccines, we have to refrigerate them immediately. They have to be stored between 2 and 8 degrees centigrade. When they're being airlifted, when they're being uh, transported around, when they're being stored, they have to be refrigerated all the way through up until they can be administered to the patients who need them. The chain is only strong as its weakest link. If there is a problem with electricity or equipment, for example, we lose vaccines, we waste today. But, but really the biggest waste of the vaccine happens in the last leg of their journey. So just before they are administered to the patients. When I first saw those numbers originally, when I saw that we are losing today about 50% of the vaccines or maybe even more, I was absolutely shocked by these numbers and I couldn't understand why. And I only understood when I saw these pictures. So in many developing countries, they're being, de uh, they're being transported not even in refrigerators, but in cool boxes on a camelback, on a horseback, on a bicycle, and so forth and so on. So it's a huge, enormous problem in developing countries. But this problem is not only for developing countries. In developed, in Western rich countries, this is a significant problem too. Now, if we look at the vaccine successes, we know that we have eradicated smallpox in people, we have eradicated rinderpest in cattle, and we are very close to eradicating polio. So polio today is only met in three countries around the world, and we are hoping that by 2025, we'll completely eradicate polio around the world. What's interesting about all three of these diseases is that they all have vaccines which are stable at room temperature. So this is really a strong indication that if we want to be successful at eradicating diseases, we, if we want to be successful at fighting the infectious diseases, we need our vaccines stable at room temperature. So in silication solution, what we have developed here can be one of such solutions. It's uh, an innovative and it's an emerging solution. We use in our solution uh, an inorganic material, silica, which we uh, mix with vaccine components. When we do so, we grow silica in a network all around vaccine components. So this can be proteins, peptides, viruses, viral particles, um, anything what, what vaccine contains. Silica would grow gently all around those components, and once it, grow, once it has grown in the network, it prevents uh, the unfolding of the amino acid chains and it prevents aggregation, the two most damaging processes when, uh, when vaccines denature. Silica does not react and does not modify the target, but it gently encases for the protection. I don't have time to show you a lot of data, but I wanted to show you at least one piece of data. So here we are looking at the immune response in groups of mice. So this is um, in, vivo, in vivo data we have just recently published. So here what we did is we've insilicated tetanus toxoid we, in, in Bath. We've sent it to our collaborators in Newcastle, who then released it from the insilication and injected it into groups of mice. One thing I need to, to say to you is that the, the tetanus toxoid was sent by a normal post without any refrigeration. So what happens here is that on day zero, we've injected groups of mice, and what we see is that immune response in the insilicated material is the same as uh, in the native um, uh, tetanus toxoid. But crucially, the unprotected sample, which was also sent by normal post, has completely denatured, and as you can see, there is no immune response uh, in that sample. So, in terms of administration to the patients, we have developed a clinical release method. So, this is the method for releasing the vaccine from the silica just before the administration. In order to make it easier for medics, we are actually developing at the moment an injectable device. So this will be very similar to a syringe because uh, medics are familiar with the syringe. It will contain the insilicated vaccine. Upon the compression, 
when the medics are ready to uh, inject into people, it, uh, uh, the injectable device will, re will release the insilicated vaccine from the silica. It will verify what is about to be injected, and then it can be injected into people when they're ready. Just to also to mention, uh, silica is actually already FDA approved as a pill additive. So majority of the pills we take today have silica in them. So there is a possibility also for oral delivery if, if uh, it's possible. Of course, majority of the vaccines today are injectable. So that's why we are interested in developing the injectable device. In terms of IP and commercialization, we have filed two patents, the UK and then the international patent and the USA patent. And actually last week we have received notice of acceptance from the US attorney indicating that our patent is about to be granted. So we're in a great place today to talk to vaccine manufacturers, which we have already started doing. Crucially, we've been in talks with uh, Vaccine Manufacturing and Innovation Centre. This is a new entity in the UK. It's funded by three universities in the UK, by the government and by the three vaccine manufacturers. Uh, one of the, um, one of the uh, things which uh, Vimic will be doing is they will be uh, stockpiling vaccines for um, epidemics, uh, future epidemics. And they're really interested in insilication because insilication can also extend the shelf life of uh, many of the vaccines. But we're also talking to other companies too. In terms of our team, our team is incredibly multidisciplinary. You can, you can read here and you can see here that we have uh, lots of uh, different disciplines involved. And most recently, we have involved a GP and an immunization nurse who uh, will be helping us as end users for um, our project in the future. So we hope that in silication, will help us in saving millions of lives in the future, will help us in fight against infectious diseases, including COVID-19, uh, and, uh, and other diseases. Thank you for your attention.